Hi everyone, welcome to Let's Learn ES6. In this series, we go over new features available to us in ES6, or ECMAScript 2015, however you want to call it. In this episode, we're going to look at uh, REST parameters and the spread operator. So to get started, we'll start with REST parameters. Uh, and in order to do this, what we're going to do first is let's talk about the arguments keyword. So if you've ever used the arguments object inside of a function, uh, you'll know that it's an array-like object that stores all of the arguments passed to a function. If you haven't, let's actually just take a quick look at what it does. So let's say let sum. We'll create a function. Uh, let's say that we'll take any number of arguments passed to it and then sum them up. So we'll say let sum uh, function. We won't define anything in that. Um, and we'll say console.log arguments. Now you might notice that I use, if you've watched my other videos, uh, uh, an anonymous function instead of an arrow function here. That's because the arguments keyword doesn't quite work inside of arrow functions. Similar to how the this keyword is lexically scoped, the arguments keyword is also lexically scoped. So if we go, uh, just call sum here, and then go, oh, actually got to pass some stuff to it. So two, four, whatever. I didn't even have four in there first. There we go. So two, three, four, five. Now you'll notice the way it displays, it's a little bit different than an array and an object. Uh, it's an array-like object. So what that means is it doesn't actually have all the array methods on it. And to prove that, let's actually try to use the reduce method to sum up all these values. So I'll say, I'll remove that console.log and I'll say return uh, arguments dot reduce and pass in a function here. So if you've never used reduce before, reduce is a uh, function that allows you to uh, iterate over an object, or sorry, iterate over an array and take the values in and kind of sum them up. It doesn't have to be just summing them up like we're gonna do. There's a lot of really clever things you can do with the reduce method. I'll actually put a link to a video in the bottom uh, in the description uh, by fun, um, what's his name, JPME, uh, fun fun function, if you haven't seen those yet. Uh, really, really great explanation of the reduce method. But it takes a previous value, which will just be, in our case, the first element in the array, and then a current value, which would be the next one. And then what we can do is we can return uh, previous plus current. And uh, what previous will do is after the first iteration, previous will be the, the sum of these values plus the next one, et cetera, et cetera. So what we should get here, so we go console.log, what we should get is two plus three plus four plus five all together, all summed up. But if we run this, you'll notice we get this error. And I'll scoot this over a bit. Arguments.reduce is not a function. So again, arguments is an array-like object. It doesn't have that actual uh, reduce method on it. However, you could get this to work. So uh, we could do something like this. We could use the call method on array, oops, array dot prototype. If I could spell, uh, I'll get it one day, dot reduce dot call, I'm going to make this much bigger. So what call does is it allows us to change the context in which a function is called. So what we want to happen here is we want uh, the reduce to be called with the arguments as the array sort of element inside of it. Uh, and we're going to call this function over it every time. Now if we run this, we'll get our value of 14 back. I had to show this to a student the other day, and this was actually a little confusing for them. Array.prototype.reduce.call, and then you pass in a new value for the context of the function, and then you pass in a function to be run for, in our case, reduce. Um, if, if you called it on another method, this function would be whatever the arguments for that method would be. It's a, little, it's a little much for somebody who's just beginning. Uh, if you've been doing this for a while, you might be looking at this being like, oh yeah, no big deal. Um, but with ES6, we get the rest parameters, so we actually make this a lot easier for us. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this thing completely, and I'm going to put in the rest parameters. So rest parameters start with a similar syntax as spread parameters. Uh, so they share this triple dot prefix, and we can name it anything we want. So I'm going to name it args. And what it does is it gathers up any arguments passed to the function and actually produces uh, a real array. So if I go console.log and I say uh, args in there. Note that I don't have to use the triple dot. Um, 
When you define it in the function signature, you use the triple dot to say this is a rest parameter. And inside of your actual function, you just use the name that you applied to it. So uh, if we run this now, you'll see that we get this array like object, or not array-like object, an actual array. Um, the way it's displayed is different because it is an actual array. And because of that, this undefined is because there's no return value for our sum here. Uh, because of that, we can actually use reduce. So now what I can do is I can go return args.reduce. And uh, we'll just keep this on a one line, prev current. Uh, and just return previous plus current. And if we clear that and run, we get 14, just like before. So uh, this returns and gathers up all of the arguments passed to a function and uh, allows us to use all of these array-like methods on it, which is really quite nice. Now, it actually doesn't just gather all of the arguments. We can actually, inside of this function, say, uh, actually, I want the first two or first three or whatever arguments uh, that are passed to it. I'm going to do something special with those and then just gather up anything else passed anything else passed to it. So let's look at this example. So this is an example I actually pulled from uh, MDN. But let's write a multiply function that will take as the first argument a multiplier and then any of the arguments after that will be uh, returned as an array of, and multiplied by the multiplier. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So we'll say let multiply multiply equal, and then in our case here, we can actually use an arrow function. So we'll say the first one will be mul, our multiplier, um, and then dot, 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 we'll just call this numbers. And oops, forgot the arrow there, there we go. So what we're gonna do here is we can return uh, map, or actually, let's see what these look like first. So console.log mul and numbers. And if I call multiply and pass in, let's say, two, and I'll pass in a list of numbers, so uh, seven, uh, four, and five. So what it should return is 14, 8, and 10 uh, when we actually call this. Right now, it'll just return those values for us. So you can see the first value that we consoled out was the multiplier. And then the numbers array here is just the rest of the parameters. So if we actually implement this function, we can say return um, numbers dot map. And then map, if you remember, is a function that will, uh, or a method that will map over and iterate over the array. So in this case, the numbers array and return a new array uh, based on whatever function we provide here. So in our case, we're just gonna return uh, mul, so our multiplier, oops, times n. Uh, doo -doo -doo. No double L there. There we go. So what we should get now, if we clear this and hit run, uh, is, oh, I got a console. Or let's actually store this in a value. So restore, I'll say let result, result equal that, and console.log result. There we go, 14, 8, and 10. So you don't have to just use the rest parameters to gather every element inside of there. It could be uh, your own pick and choose if you want. So the flip side of rest parameters is the spread operator. Uh, let's look at what the spread operator looks like. So let's just say, um, let's use an example of math.max. If you've ever used math.max, you'll know, and I'll let's do a quick example here. Let's say let max equal math dot max, and if you pass in a comma separated list of values, it will simply return uh, console.log max. It will return the maximum value passed to it. So in this case, it's gonna be eight. Uh, sometimes when you're writing programs, you don't know the number of values that are passed to it, but you still want to be able to get the maximum value of that. So uh, let's say maybe we have numbers. So let uh, a numbers array. So let numbers equal, and then we'll pass in, well, I guess four, six, three, and eight, just so we know, there we go, uh, that it's gonna be the same sort of example. Now, we can't just pass numbers in here, unfortunately. That's not the way that this particular method was created. So if we run this, uh, we'll return not a number. So if you want to actually run and call numbers as the array inside of Mac, um, or sorry, 
call all these values from numbers on the math method here, or max method, wow. Um, we have to do something similar to what we did with the array.prototype.reduce.call. And we need to use a dot apply method. Now apply works very similar to the way that call works. It allows us to change the context a function or a method is called with and provide its um, arguments. In this case, it allows us to provide as the second argument to apply a, an array of arguments. Call wants you to just pass them in as individual arguments. So what we can say is inside of math.max, we want the this context to be our numbers array, uh, or sorry, uh, we want it to be null because we don't want it to be that, but we want to pass in numbers as the, uh, the values. And what this does, first of all, let's run that. You'll see eight. What it technically does is it will replace, uh, and if we look at an example here, it will replace and pass in all the values like this. So when you call it, it just looks like that. This is great because we don't have to, to know uh, at the beginning the kind of fixed set of uh, values we want to pass in. However, again, uh, thinking uh, about some of my students I worked with, I've had to show them this in a, even a slightly more complex example, and it just doesn't make sense uh, initially. After kind of explaining it a bit and explaining like why null, why not some value, why is numbers the second one, um, they can start to get it. However, if we use rest or sorry, spread operator, uh, we can do this in sort of one go. And the spread operator is almost like a, a better apply. So if we remove apply here and we just get rid of all of these values like that, oops, I remove the parentheses. We can just say dot, dot, dot numbers. Now remember it shares the same syntax as the rest parameters. So this triple dot prefix and uh, basically what it does is the same as apply. It just spreads out or expands in place our elements. So if I run this, we get eight, we get the same thing. So it basically just takes all of these and we could have, you know, four to however many numbers and it'll just spread them all out. It's really quite nice. So uh, it just makes it a little bit easier to look at. Um, and it doesn't confuse, uh, again, I like to think of uh, when I'm learning these things or teaching these things, how do I kind of make it most relatable to a beginner or somebody who hasn't really looked at all these sort of weird um, array dot prototype dot whatever examples? It makes it a little bit easier to understand. Uh, and the great thing about this is it actually makes it a little bit easier to some uh, to work with arrays. So let's say we wanted to concatenate an array together. So we could have numbers. We'll keep our numbers array here, and maybe we'll have a uh, a new numbers array. It's a great name, right? And we'll just have some other values, whatever it is, right? If we wanted to concatenate these two together, we'd have to create another variable, say, let's call it concat, uh, concat array. And we would use, pick one of these. So we'll say new numbers dot concat, and then pass in numbers. And what that does is it will, and I'll console that out, concat array. That will, oop, what am I doing here? New numbers dot concat. Oh, new number, sorry, clear, hit run. Uh, it'll concatenate them together. But we have to create a brand new variable to do such a thing. Uh, however, if we just use uh, the spread operator, we can actually do this in one go here. So I'm just gonna copy this, paste that there. And as a new element, the last element, or even like in between, you could just go comma, dot, 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 numbers. And again, the spread operator will expand in place all of the values inside of this array. And then if we clear this and run it again, we get the same exact value. And I wanna show that you can do this actually somewhere else as well. So you could do it like, I don't know, in here, why not? Same thing's gonna happen. Clear, run, smashes them all together. Really quite nice. So it gives us a lot of ability to have a, a just a, an easier way to understand things uh, in this new syntax. If you've been doing it the other way, um, this might be something to think about a little bit more uh, as you're kind of moving into writing things in ES6, but I think it looks great. And we've had stuff like this, the spread operator in other languages. In CoffeeScript, it's the uh, splat, I believe. Um, but now we finally have it, or now we finally have it in JavaScript.
So uh, I hope you learned something about uh, rest parameters and the spread operator uh, this week. Next week, we'll be looking at destructuring. Uh, we can do destructuring on arrays and objects. So that's going to be pretty fun. Again, make sure you subscribe. If you uh, like what you see, follow me on Twitter at rchristiani. And uh, until next time, bye-bye.